August 1st, 2024. Mark the dates on your calendar, Husky fans, because the Huskies are joining the Big Ten. So are the Ducks, but this is Locked On Huskies. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Lockdown Huskies. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's Lars Hansen. We write for Inside the Huskies with Fan Nation and Sports Illustrated. And today we're talking about the big one. Yeah, that's that's the Big Ten Conference or the Big 18. You know, we'll get into that a little bit because I, I feel like that's really just a better name for it at this point since they're, they're almost a double. But just real quick, I want to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash lockdown college or enter the promo code Lockdown College at checkout for a free white tech hat with any purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. So Lars, let's talk about it. This is, I, and I'm going to keep saying this because I know it's stupid, but I also think it's kind of funny. This really is the big one. This is, for lack of a better term, survival in the world of college sports right now. Washington and Oregon are officially going to be leaving the Pac-12 after the 2023 season uh, in all sports. So this won't kick in until, as I said earlier, August 1st, 2024 is the date that the Huskies will be joining the Big Ten. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's a long time coming. I think we've known for over the last four or five years, even going back further than that, probably the last decade, this has slowly been in the works that eventually just the way the landscape of the Pac-12 was going, you were going to get smaller. You were going to get eventually some schools needing to move east to find better revenue options and better streaming and better viewership. And just better everything because – the better schools in the Pac-12 were carrying the bottom of the conference for the longest time. Some people will say, yeah, USC was among those bottom schools, but as a brand, as what USC represents, they are always going to be a marquee name. Much like Washington, they were an 0-12 program at one point. They will always be a marquee name. It's taken them a while to get back to that point, but now they've pretty much established themselves as one of the marquee names in college athletics, again, especially in college football. And so we kind of just knew this was always going to be the day and finally, it all just kind of came together in a matter of supposedly 48 hours. But this has really been a decade. This has really been a decade in the works. This is just the final nail in the coffin happened over the course of 48 hours. RIP the Pac-12. Colorado. Do you, do you want to blame Colorado for, for all of this? Or no, we, we don't have well, to go I mean, far. That, the, the Colorado pond and all this was interesting because they're not a marquee brand. They're, they're a decent brand. They're a decent area. And Boulder's actually a really nice city. Don't get me wrong. And having primetime Deion Sanders there certainly is going to make them more attractive. But they were, they were the first out the door, not because they were the best. They were just – that was kind of the first domino that had to fall – and then, because we heard so many rumors and there's so much speculation, oh, Washington in the Big 12, Oregon in the Big 12, Washington in the Big 10, you know, and Mountain West merging with the Pac-12. And it was like, look, let's, once the adults in the room realized what the score was and looked at what the time was on the scoreboard, Anna Marie Casse and Oregon's president were like, yeah, we're out. And, you know, this, this is something I want to give a lot of credit to Brett McMurphy with Action Sports, who was the first person to report that this was in the works and supposed to be finalized when it was. That was last Friday. Time really flies. I, I can't believe it's been a week already. Like, it's, it, it's crazy. But he, uh, one thing that he said in his report, that Washington and Oregon were already vetted and cleared to join the conference. And this is something that, I mean, I know that I had heard from a couple of sources last June after USC and UCLA had uh, originally uh, announced their plans to exit the conference following this upcoming season to join the Big Ten, was that Washington and Oregon also applied and were cleared at that time. Right after they heard the news, they said, okay, we're sending in our application now. And there were some other factors at play. And actually one of the big ones that I had heard and you know, it, you can uh, just kind of revisionist history, how much truth there might be to that actual story is that um, there were presidents in the Big Ten that weren't willing to split the revenue pie any further, which is an interesting thing, thing to think about. Read into it what you will. I, I, I feel like it's necessary to put it out there, but it's not the you, you, you can't necessarily take it as 100 percent fact. Because everything that we we know about conference realignment at this point is at some some point diluted. But the one thing that we do know is true is that they were cleared. 
both schools were cleared at the time. Yep. So, yeah. oh, no, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and I think that was kind of, the, it was like, the, it was the elephant in the room. It was like, it was not a matter of yes. if Washington was going to leave, it was when. And this whole pack, and they were here because the Pac 12 network and the Pac 12 conference could not get a media rights deal. They, they actually, People aren't giving Oregon and Washington enough credit. They could have left to your point at Brett's point last year. They could have left at any point last year. They waited until the 11th hour to say, okay, back to get us the best deal. Get us the best deal you can. And with every single month that went by, less and less options were going away. More and more options were going away. Less and less were on the table to where you basically had an exclusive streaming only deal, which was not going to be appropriate for Washington or Oregon to take. Similar, you much like USC already knew, they didn't even know that was the offer on the table, and there was no way they would have taken it. The schools that would have taken it are the reasons why they're in this position now. Unfortunately, you know, we'll talk about it later, but that includes Mount Water. But I still think, you know, this was always a question of when, not if. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And that, that was kind of the point I was going to get at was, and it's something where there are, the two schools who have kind of really been left out in the cold through all of this are Washington state and Oregon state. We'll get into Washington state in the next segment with the apple cup and you know what the future of the apple cup might be, but it's one thing that I think really does deserve to be talked about because there are a lot of fans who are saying, well, just kind of like, why, why now, why is this happening now? And if you didn't see this in the cards for about nine months on like on a generous end, I I don't know what to tell you because it was just up oh, media deals coming, media deals coming. Oh no 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 February. Oh no March. Nah April. Oh no 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 no. We, we're gonna we're gonna get to it at the at media day. No 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 no. We're gonna we're gonna get to it in like July early August. That's that's bad. I, that, that, that that's really bad. It's I I'm I'm trying I I get emotional about all this because it just gets me riled up because there's so much at stake here. And one thing that really needs to be considered in all of this is the fact that it's now sink or swim for that, for lack of a better term, in especially in the world of college football, because this is what fans of some, some programs really need to realize is that college football will make or break your athletic department. And if you have a chance like Washington does where, now we can talk a little bit about the deal that Washington and Oregon are getting, where it's going to be thirty million in twenty twenty four, and there are escalators for one million extra on top of that each year. So thirty one in twenty twenty five, thirty two in twenty twenty six, so on and so forth, until the new media deal kicks in in twenty thirty one, I believe. And one thing that that needs to be talked about when it comes to that deal is that deal will pay out $1.1 billion per year. Do the math. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care about tradition. I don't, I don't care about anything else at this point. Money rules college athletics. I'm sorry to people who are from like my dad's generation who say, Oh no, it's about regional. It's about playing this team. It's about playing that team. And yeah, those, those trips to the schools are special. Yes. A trip to Michigan is still going to be very special for Husky fans. A trip to Ohio State is still going to be very special. But now the fact that you have a chance to play them every couple of years honestly makes that a lot cooler. And I think that there's going to be so much added benefits from this. And then we'll get into the competition aspect of it later on the show. I keep jumping ahead of myself. I need to stop doing that. But there are so many factors at play. So all the credit in the world to Anna Marie Cause and athletic director Jen Cohen for saying, we see what the long-term of this deal is. And we see what the long-term outlook of staying in the Pac-12, who, mind you, this is the last thing I'm going to say on the matter, uh, because I, I know I'm ranting, but the last thing I'm going to say is, think about this, this Apple deal with Pac-12, right? And I'm, I'm not a big soccer guy, but... Lionel Messi just signed with Inter-Miami. And the MLS uh, streaming rights are owned by Apple TV. And there's apparently stuff in this deal that, you know, apparently it could get up to 30 or $35 million a year with certain... I, I, I saw the number today, and again, things are diluted, so take, take this is as you will. But that the number of um, subscribers that needed to be hit was $2.5 million. Lionel Messi... Arguably the most famous athlete 
in the world got Apple TV's numbers up to 800,000. Yeah, there's, there's no chance. No chance at all that that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, the fact that the Pac-12 network, I think it had, what, 14, 15 million subscribers, 22 at its peak, maybe, I think. I, I don't know if the, I know the, lower, the first two numbers are closer to accurate. But if you're saying you can get 5% of that, 10% of that, again, you're still kind of in the same ballpark and then divide that amongst 10 schools. Yeah, that's just not going to fly, right? And and also, if to make it worse, if the production value and the production of those games is going to be on the universities to do, there's literally no incentive to do that for any not, school. Not, not at all. Especially when you're still calling them student athletes, so you know, right? <laughs> right. Well, because the thing is with the MLS, okay, they're pro players, they're going across the country, they're doing all this, but they're least getting paid because they are pro athletes. Okay, cool, we understand that. For college athletes, that just seemed like too much of a sell. No, you're absolutely right, and you know what? I think this is a really great bet on the part of Washington, Oregon, with making this move to the Big Ten. You know what else? You can get some great bets. FanDuel Sportsbook. Football season is about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get the chance to make bonus bets every time they win the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use those on anything. Spreads, player props, over-unders. There's so much. You know where you can go check that out? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sportsbook. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. A couple seconds here. I want to talk about a few bets that I, you know, I highly recommend. Matt Jones, Offensive Player of the Year, Go Pats, plus 20,000. Do it. Bengals, Super Bowl, plus 1,000. Free bets that way. Vikings to win the NFC North, plus 260. Free money. You're welcome. FanDuel. Now, we can talk about the Apple Cup. I want to hand the floor over to you because I had my rant. You, as a Wazoo alum, I, I remember, I need to point that way. The point, Pointing that way. This is something we talked about pre-show. You have the floor, please. Yeah, so there's my personal sentiment, and then there's the sentiment that most Washington State fans share. We're going to go with the latter first. Because most Washington State fans at this point, as unofficially the Pac-4, soon to be the Pac-2 when Cal and Stanford go to the ACC. So you're gonna have Whoa. two schools. So so you're gonna have two schools. So they're gonna get a fifty percent share of the Pac-12 network whenever they sell that to whoever they sell that to. But for Washington State, you kind of got you, you're you're left in the cold in this. No pun intended. In the fact that it's in Pullman and you know November December, those are some pretty cold games. You kind of got. You, there's still a chance to salvage it, but even if you end up with say in the Big Twelve, almost there's 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 a way to which. That is the best path for Washington to continue the Apple Cup with Washington in a Rose Bowl setting or in a bowl game setting, in a yes. post game setting. Hey, because the Big 12 and the Big 10, those those bowl ties are going to stay together. They're Washington and Washington State could play each other in the postseason. And I think that would almost be a better way to handle it than to try and force having a neutral site, and I'm going to use air quotes under neutral site here, at Lumen Field every year that's because not, that, yeah. that, that's, that, that's a home game for Washington. Remember, I'm old enough to know that Washington played an entire season at Century Lake. Or, I'm old enough know, to remember I, that too. I, I, don't, I don't know if it was actually a different name back then even still. That was but, that was still know. when it was Century Link. Yeah, no, okay, that's right. Good, that was 2012. Good. good, because, yeah, because when the Husky Stadium was getting the renovation done, they played – so that – when you are there's already – history proving that that's a home game for Washington. Like if you're playing, if you're saying, okay, Texas A&M, Hey, let's have a neutral site kickoff classic in Lumen field in Seattle. Well, that's not exactly that's equal to Auburn in the kickoff classic a few years ago against Washington in Atlanta, Georgia. That's a uh, next state over for Alabama, Yeah, it's not but that's a mile and it's a country mile for Washington to fly across the country. You never see those schools coming West. Why would Washington State, in a smaller context, come from Pullman in the southeast over to Seattle either in the end of September or in the end of November if you want to keep the Apple Cup on Thanksgiving? First of all, if you keep it on Thanksgiving and you have it in a neutral site, the Seahawks are going to make that a little difficult depending on the season. So already that that logistically just doesn't make sense. The only way you can create the Apple Cup and continue its history is if you did it every other year in Pullman if you're Washington and you're already going back east to East Lansing, New Jersey to play Rutgers, you're going to Happy Valley to play Penn State, 
and then you got to come back to end your season in Pullman. Yeah, no, that 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 that's not appealing. And for Washington State, okay, yeah, maybe we get to beat Big Brother, or maybe we just get smoked like we have for the past you know decade plus. You know, right? Where it's 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 not like okay, we're not getting a ton of money from this game. You know, unless like you create a TV game or you know kind of TV special game around it, where Washington State gets a little more money depending on what conference they end up. Because if they end up in the Mountain West. You're not, you know, that's a non-conference game. And also one that if you're Washington, there's way more at stake for you than there is for Washington State. Right. And, and Washington State wouldn't want to come to Washington either way to play that at the end of the year because that's, you got left out in the cold. And I think it's just better to die off that way. Are you reading my mind? Because I, w- I was about to ask you what, like, what do you prefer? Just top of your head. What do you think is, is the right solution? My preference people are clearly people. Everybody who's making the schedules is definitely listening to this right now. So I need to hear these thoughts. Well, they absolutely <laughs> should be if they're not already. But I think the only the only fair way to do it is if Washington State ends up in the Big Twelve, let's say, and you happen to play them in the postseason, and you can call it. Let, let, let's say you're playing for whatever bowl game you're playing for, and then you can also throw in the Apple Cup on top of it. Like, hey, we're playing for the Apple Cup. It's not really a thing, but it, it's a form of rivalry. That's really probably the best way because any other way it is a cheap inversion of it it's it's not you're you're you're, you rip the tradition away from the conference you're trying to like give it a pat on the head from five from five thousand miles away you know it's not it's disingenuous so i think if you're going to continue it continue it as a bowl game you know when you if you guys happen to meet for it but otherwise i don't think i just don't think playing at lumen is going to work I think Washington says they want to continue it and continue it in Pullman. I just don't know logistically if that's going to work. Because if they do continue it on an annual basis, there's no way that game continues in November. There's, no, I think that, that's the caveat for me. I can see it continuing as a home and home every year. But I just – it there's so many more logistical hurdles that have to get settled through. Because if Washington, ends up, Washington State ends up in a power cut conference and – you know, you can make that game in mid to late September, second, third week of September. Okay, that's fine because then you can go into the meteor Big Ten schedule right. and, and and you don't have to worry about any trip to Pullman in the snow or anything. And and Washington State fans, I think, would be open to playing that game in September, especially if it's in Pullman, even if it's in Washington, even if it's at Husky State in Washington, because it's early and it at least would matter. And that premise being that you're in a power five conference, because if you're Mountain West Conference and you're in your Washington State, that just it's not. It doesn't have the same allure to it. It's like, does without Chris Peterson, does this season's game against Boise State have that grandiose allure that it would traditionally? Right. No. I know I just said screw tradition, and in the previous sentence talked about the Pac-12, but I think that the game does need to continue. I think that there's more benefit to having the game continue, playing it, just continuing as a home and home every year. You're right about. Thanksgiving week might not be the best time for it, but there are ways to make it work. Colorado, Colorado state are able to make it work. And I think that, you know, maybe, maybe having it be the last non-conference game of the year with students on campus at UW, uh, not because of the quarter system, it's, it's going to be a better atmosphere, honestly, than even in the past when, you know, a lot of kids go home, it is what it is. But I think that's something that really does need to be considered. And I, I honestly have faith that both sides will be able to come to an agreement on a way to work it out where home and home can continue because that's something that there, there are a lot of things about the Pac-12 that don't need to be continued. Let's be real. But the Apple Cup is one of the things it does. And I think that that's a great way to just kind of go through it and just continue a home and home. Last non-conference game of the year, that works. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we're, we're going to get into a little bit of just kind of just battling in the state of Washington because I wanted to just talk a little bit about why these everydayers should tune in tomorrow because we're going to talk recruiting. We're going to talk about Washington's class of 2023 uh, since, you know, this is our first show and some of the freshmen that we've seen class 2024, which is really exciting to think about so far and talk a little bit about, you know, in the state of Washington, which is something that, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm here's, here's another one for you. I, the Huskies have not been very comfortable in the state of Washington recently. But do you know when you are going to be comfortable? When you're wearing a bird dogs. Bird dogs, they make you look good. Their stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and the leg to give you a truly sculpted look. 
Uh, Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing that the Lululemon shorts do, but they fit you way better. And they fit you way better than, you know, those the shorts that are just made of a stiff, restricted cotton that nobody really likes to wear. Me, I'm a big gym shorts kind of guy. And my Bird Dogs, they fit me great. My shorts, my joggers. I wore my joggers to practice the other day. And they were just so comfortable to just lounge around in. They fit me really well. And I just, I really love the way they feel. And, you know, I just, I, I can't say enough good things about them. So I want you to go to birddogs.com slash lockdown college or enter the promo code lockdown college for a free white tech hat with your order. That's birddogs.com slash lockdown college or the promo code lockdown college for a free white tech hat. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you that. Now, it's time to get into the big thing because I just mentioned recruiting, which we're going to talk way more about tomorrow because it's something that uh, I know Kalen DeVore has talked about needing to be better and needing to level up in is the recruiting world. Now, instead of just going head-to-head with Oregon and USC, there are going to be more battles with Michigan and Ohio State. Can the Huskies compete? Lars, go. Hand off. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of – that's. The question to your point is it's not can they recruit against the bottom of the Big Ten with you know the Illinois, the Purdue's, you know, this should be Iowa for certain guys. I would say probably this should be Michigan State for certain guys. Again, ironically, they lost Jeremy Bernard to Michigan State, plays against them last year. Not anymore, they didn't. But 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 to your point, yeah, exactly. <laughs> doesn't perform against Washington and says, Hey, you know what? Let me go back there. So I think to your point though, I think this is gonna matter more when it comes to who they can get out of the transfer portal. Because I think for Washington, and I wrote about this on Asana.com, on Inside the Huskies a couple, about a week ago, where, yes, this does expand Washington's recruiting footprint even more because you're able to be seen by more. If you're a kid that watches Rutgers home games and Washington comes in, you're like, holy cow, I didn't even know about this. And this offense, is going... you're opening new eyes and new areas. So that's, that's always a good thing for recruiting, no matter what school you are. But Washington, I don't think, is going to be a school that all of a sudden kind of starts to mimic Oregon and says, oh, wait, you know, we're going to go to – Florida and get four or five guys, and we're going to go to the Northeast, and we're going to go – they might find one or two guys this season. It's, this class is going to be Dominic Kirks out of Ohio, um, kind of a small sample size of that, four-star DN, who wasn't offered by Ohio State. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Oh, but, no, you're, you're correct. But I, it, almost, and ironically, uh, Armand and Javon Parker, two other guys from Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, who had ended up – on the other interest from, the I, I was gonna I was gonna butt in, but they did have interest from Michigan State and Illinois. So, so here's the thing though, brothers stay together. Oh, you yeah. can't offer one without the other, and the two schools that did that learned the hard way. So yep. that's why both Parker brothers are at the University of Washington, and why they're when they go to East Lansing this fall, it's gonna be like, oh well, hey, how come these guys didn't get an offer from Michigan State? Well, one of them did, yeah, but it was also kind of backdoor through the last minute. And it wasn't really genuine. Kind of what, what exactly? What, it wasn't a genuine where Inoki Brechtfield comes in and says, "Who's that guy? Oh, he's my brother." I want you both. Right, let's right go. This way. We, we, we let's got go. Right here for you. Right, see right here. <laughs> see right there. What, what, what can I get you? What snacks do you want? You know, and you know, we haven't been able to see Armand Parker show on the field against fans what he can do. He looked okay in fall camp. You know, I think. He's kind of a guy where he'll get a decent amount of playing time this year and get into more so next season, whereas Javon's a little bit ahead of the curve because he played last season. But those are two examples of guys where you're you're as long as they're perfect, because that's what Kalen's always going to focus on is are they a culture fit? We they don't Washington doesn't need to go and get a guy just to go get a guy. They want to know, hey, if we're gonna go all the way out here, if I'm gonna make an in-home visit to Detroit, Michigan, all the way from Seattle, I'm gonna need to know that hey, you're down and you're ready to go. You know, because and especially in these day and age of recruiting, so many kids are like, hey, and even even for Washington and even Oregon, like, oh, I'm really high on Oregon, and then all of a sudden they end up at you know Texas A&M or you know LSU or some Big Ten school, where it's like, okay, wait, I thought you were high on them, and so the recruiting game, Washington's and much like every other school has got to play it, but I think Washington is always going to stay true to themselves and say, hey, we're going to see where our guys are at, but we're still going to have that Midwest to West Coast footprint. Maybe some guys from Texas. I mean, you get Curly Reed, the first player from Louisiana in three decades to come to Washington. So you're going to have maybe one or two guys. Maybe, I would say conservative estimate, probably five or six guys over the course of two classes from outside their general recruiting footprint. Otherwise, it's going to be your, your Mountain West school, your Mountain schools and your West Coast schools combined with the transfer portal. And that, I think, is actually where it's going to make more of a difference because 
guys that are at a Big Ten school or at a Big 12 school or maybe even at an SEC school that aren't getting playing time say, hey, I can't play in the SEC, but man, I can go to the Big Ten. Whereas, I don't want to go all the way out to the Pac-12. I mean, Dylan Johnson, a running back from Mississippi State, did. Yep. But those are so few and far between. The more you're seeing in front of eyes in the Big Ten and, and East Coast players and, and other big-time programs, I was like, okay, I, that actually does look more appealing than, oh, I've had to play in the Pac-12 or the Pac-10 and i got to be right. at Apple TVs. Now it's a better right. sell all the way around. I want to touch on one thing you just said with – Touch on Dylan Johnson, who said, "I who's you know coming to play in the Pac-12 for this year, uh, but to come play in the Pac-12 that's few and far between." I feel like we're really just scratching the surface of what the transfer portal is going to be. Washington has shown that, unlike some other schools, and I won't name names because they know who they are, that uh, just go all in with uh, let's just let's just call it NIL to uh, to high school recruits and just say, "All right, this is this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to get you here." They don't. Washington has proven already that they're not going to play that game. That you you said it. You hit the nail on the head. They're going to look for culture fits. They're going to look for specific guys that we that they think. Hey, we like you. We think that you're great at what you're going to do here. Come come with us. Now we'll see if they can truly because obviously I think there's a level that still needs to be reached from that aspect of high school recruiting. And look at some of the guys they brought in this year that I really, really like. And again, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Guys like I really like Noah Carter's film, the edge from uh, from Arizona. I like him a lot. Or t- we'll talk a little bit about Jericho Johnson, who just released his top four, who is one of the best D tackles I've seen with, on high school film in a very long time. We'll talk about guys like that who's got, he, like, he, like I said, he got Washington's top four. They're, if they can get players like that and then – continue to find under the radar guys. And this is a person whose name I bring up every single time I can, because this is where Washington has found success for a very long time, finding under the radar players. Like in my opinion, a big one in this class, the 2024 class, Rachel Manabula Balavu from San Diego. I really like him. Elias Johnson. Look at, look at some of the guys that Chris Peterson brought in, right? Look at Taylor Rapp, who was just middle of the road, three-star recruit. Vita Vea. Look at guys like that. That is where this program has found success. And do they still need to recruit at a top 20 level? Yes. But if they can do that while filling out their class with just like the back end with guys like that, guys who they say, we really like your film. We really think that we can develop you while also bringing in key needs in the transfer portal that can just, you know, fill a role for a year, maybe two years. Look at what they did with Wayne Talapapa last year. I really like Wayne Talapapa, but I think Dylan Johnson is way better than he'll ever be with all due respect, truly. And if they can find roles like that and just say, all right, yeah, we, we like this guy. We're going to let this guy sit here for a year. And, oh, we can also bring in a Dylan Johnson for a year and have him play this role. Yeah, no, 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 this is great. And then, you know, they, they like Tybo Rogers. We won't really get into suspension on, on his part. It's a, just a bad example. I have running backs on my mind right now, so that's just where my brain went. Uh, but we can talk about, like, corners, right? Look at this corner class. You talk about Curly Reed, Caleb Presley, top player in the state of Washington last year. And then Leroy Bryant, who if Leroy Bryant is playing in a bigger league, like if he plays in the Trinity League, that's a top 200 player, man. That kid could play. Like you start yeah. stacking your classes with guys like that. This is their, this, this program can. And I, I think they really will be able to compete with the Michigans and the Ohio States of the world. Yeah, and yeah, I think they're building to that. It's just it's it's can they get to that next level? And you, I mean, you hit on the nail that they're they're getting the good players and they're getting the right players. It's just can they develop them quickly enough to where you're not starting off in the Big Ten seven and five? You want to go into the Big Ten nine and three at worst, you know, ten and two because you can't you can win ten games in the Pac ten or Pac twelve. That should be able to carry over, especially the more you get a better baseline talent level on the team. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And as we start to wind down here, Lars, I want to thank you for being here with us today. And I want to remind everybody about our little giveaway that we're doing on YouTube. Not really little. I think it's, you know, it's a fairly substantial giveaway, I'd say, right? Your, yeah. your face yesterday when I announced it, because that was, I, I'll be honest, that was kind of out of the blue. I've been wanting to do something like that for a while. If we can get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube by September 2nd, when Washington kicks off against Boise State, I will buy somebody who is subscribed to our YouTube channel two tickets to Washington's matchup against Oregon. I'm willing to do that, but we need to hit a thousand subscribers. 
Once we do that on YouTube, that will be awesome. And while you also do that, you know, if you'd like to listen to us while you drive uh, or while you, you know, are at the gym, we really appreciate that as well. Please feel free to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, wherever you get your podcasts. That'd be great. We, we would love that. So, Lars, thank you. I'm Roman Tomashoff. We also write for Inside the Huskies. Check out our work at si.com slash college slash Washington. And we will talk to you tomorrow.